Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a story time about a horrible job interview, like literally the worst job interview of my entire life. Just a disclaimer, I'm not all upset about this situation or anything like that. This isn't like me complaining about how I didn't get this job, which spoiler alert, didn't get it. <laughs> it's just an entertaining story, but I also just want to share it so it can be relatable and maybe a learning experience. If you ever go through something similar or something discouraging happens, if there's some sort of roadblock in your career, keep in mind that when one door closes, another one opens. So to give a little bit of backstory to this, um, this happened a couple years ago. It was in 2016. So at the time I was working for a company doing internet marketing. I had my bachelor's degree in communications. That was like my first real job out of college. And I had always been pretty confused like all throughout college about what I wanted to do with my life, what I wanted my career to be. I always was really interested in the beauty field and I had always considered going to cosmetology school and doing hair and makeup for a living. But I wasn't sure if that was really the right field for me and if I would be able to like be successful and have a stable career doing that. So anyway, I was at this marketing company and a few months into it, I was really unhappy. I realized that like a nine to five desk job just is not for me. So I was like, oh, I really feel like I should go to cosmetology school but I don't know, I'm kind of scared. Like I, I still was just very unsure and on the fence. So I started looking online and I found a job posting for a sales associate position at a makeup counter in the Macy's near my apartment. So I figured, oh my God, this could be perfect because it didn't require having a cosmetology license. You basically were just working at a makeup counter, selling products to customers. And it strictly said in the posting that there was no experience required. You did not have to have any experience with makeup. You didn't have to have any knowledge at all with makeup. At that point, I had worked in a clothing store for a couple of years. I also had experience waitressing, um, working as a cashier, doing freelance makeup. Like I had a lot of things under my belt that I felt made me qualified for that job. And I don't want that to sound like, oh my God, like I should have got that job. I was so qualified. I was the perfect fit. No, it was just like, I saw the posting and I thought, hey, that sounds like something I could do. That sounds like something that I'm qualified for and I have the right experience for. Let me apply. So I filled out the application, submitted my resume and a cover letter that same night. And I told myself, you know, this will be my sign. I'll see, like, this might be my stepping stone into the beauty field. And I'll just leave it up to fate and I'll, you know, see what happens. So a couple days later, I received an email that they wanted me to come in for an in-person interview. And I want to say that the interview itself was rescheduled like one or two times which should have been a little bit of a sign to me from the beginning. But anyway, I go in for the interview, you know, I'm dressed very professionally. I have a copy of my resume and my cover letter. I get there a little bit early, you know, just trying to be as prepared and as professional as possible. And I kind of was like ready in my head because I had obviously done several job interviews at this point. And most of the time, especially for a retail position, they always ask you the same kind of questions. Like, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Tell me a time where you, had to overcome something difficult at work and what did you do? How'd you deal with it? Crap like that. So I, I had like some answers prepared in my head. So I'm sitting there, I'm waiting, 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 waiting. The woman finally comes out later than the scheduled time of our interview, which again should have been assigned to me. So she comes over, introduces herself, and then we go over to the room where we're gonna have our interview. And she, right off the bat, is just talking and talking and talking about herself and about how she started out as just like a regular sales associate and now she's like worked her way up. She's been working for this same Macy store for like 18 years or some shit and she has now made her way up to, I don't think she was like the head store manager, but she was like the head manager of the makeup department in that Macy's. Which by the way, not to like downplay her success or her career or anything, but it wasn't like a big Macy's. They didn't have like Mac and Urban Decay and all those other brands. It was a really small Macy's in a really small dead mall in a really small town. 
and they literally only had like Lancome and Estee Lauder there. And I like to hear people talk, you know, I, I like listening to people's stories, but at one point I'm just thinking to myself like, when are we gonna actually get into the interview? You know when you meet people that are just so into themselves and they just think that they're so much better than everyone and all they want to do is talk about themselves and their own achievements and like try to impress you that is the kind of person that this woman was so finally she starts asking me some questions but the questions are all makeup specific which was a little confusing to me because the job posting specifically said no knowledge or experience with makeup is required. So I did not think that that'd be part of the interview. So one of the questions she asked me was, what's my favorite product at the moment? And I kind of figured that she didn't really care about what my response was. She was probably just asking me these questions because she just wants to see how I talk about products and how can I like sell something that I love. Just to get a feel for like how I would be talking to customers and if I would be, you know, like a good salesperson. So I figured, okay, maybe that's all it is. So I told her that I really love the Makeup Forever Ultra HD liquid foundation. That was like my favorite thing at the moment. So she's like, <laughs> it's so funny to me how these products put HD in their name. Like, do you even know what HD means? Like, do you even know what it means to be HD? Like you, a makeup product can't be HD or something like that. And I'm just like, Why are you giving me this attitude? I didn't make the product. I did not name the product. Personally, I don't give a shit what the product's called and if you think the name is stupid or makes sense or whatever, I like the product. I like how it works on my face. That's all. So then she's like, you know, trying to impress me with her knowledge of makeup and telling me all about HD and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Wow, that's very interesting. So she finishes drilling me on all these makeup questions. And at this point already, I'm kind of feeling like things aren't going so well because she just did not seem satisfied with any of the responses I was giving her, which is a little discouraging. Cause I was like, well, you're not even giving me a chance. Like you're not even focusing on like the relevant experience that I have. You're not asking me any questions about myself or how my work performance is. You're literally asking me questions that, as far as I know, are not relevant to this position. If you want someone who has knowledge of makeup and specifically knowledge and experience with Lancome, why would you not put that in the job listing, right? You know, it, it, it's totally fair that you would want that, but put that in the job posting. So then she takes out this packet and she starts asking me questions that are traditional, like, retail interview questions like what are your strengths and weaknesses etc so i'm thinking like these are probably the questions that she's required to ask from macy's like these are probably the questions that go along with the job posting those other questions were just her own personal ones that she was just deciding to ask me on her own so she literally reads off the first question to me and as soon as I start responding she's just straight up not paying attention like not making eye contact with me just like so what are some of your strengths and weaknesses not even acknowledging that I'm sitting right in front of her then she starts texting once I would stop speaking she was just like oh mm-hmm okay that, that that's good and then she'd read the next question. I would start speaking, she would start texting. And the whole rest of the interview, she was literally on her phone, texting with somebody back and forth. And she's like at one point like laughing. I was just in such disbelief. And I literally was sitting there. And I think at one point, like in the middle of my response, I just stopped. Cause I was just waiting to see like if she would get off her phone and actually like make eye contact with me. And I, I like, I could not believe what was happening. And I was like, is this some kind of joke? Is this a test? It was just so rude. And I just felt like I was wasting my time. I was wasting my breath, wasting my time being there. And it was really, really disappointing because even though the job would have probably not been great because having worked retail in the past, 
it's not something that I would want to do again, honestly. Like, those hours suck. I really feel for people who work retail. Like, you guys are superheroes. But, you know, at the time, I was so desperate and so unhappy in my current job that I was, like, really excited about this as a possible opportunity like the first step in me changing careers so i was really upset and you know looking back i kind of wish that i would have said something and like asserted myself a little bit more so then i don't even think we got through all of the questions that were in the packet she just stopped at one point and was like okay i think that that's good enough these are just the boring questions that i'm required to ask you so at this point i'm thinking wow this was horrible complete waste of time i didn't get the job she hates me for whatever reason doesn't even like me enough to give me any kind of respect but then she's telling me that it was so great meeting me and she really likes me a lot and she's asking me like if I feel comfortable touching people's faces and like actually applying makeup to people and I was like yeah absolutely you know I do makeup on my friends and family a lot I've done like freelance prom makeup so she's telling me how they do these events like once a month where people can come in and get free makeovers and get their makeup done and they basically have makeup artists come in and volunteer to do free makeup and then they don't get paid but instead they get gratis which if you don't know it's basically like you just get free products which most likely it probably wasn't even going to be full-size products but i was like okay it's interesting that she's bringing that up so she's like telling me how she really likes me a lot and she sees so much potential in me and if she could like if she had the final say she would hire me right now on the spot but she still has to talk to her boss so i'm thinking like is she lying to me right now or does she actually like me and maybe the reason why she wasn't listening to my responses to the boring required questions was because she already made her mind up and she wants to hire me. I don't, like, I left there so confused. But either way, I was like, well, now she is gonna offer me this job. I don't know that I wanna take it anyway because that was a really bad experience. And if she's gonna be my boss, like, I don't know if I wanna deal with all that. So then a few days, like maybe a week goes by and I get an email saying that I was not qualified enough for the job. They didn't think that I was like a good fit which is fine, you know, like I'm not mad or upset about that, but it was just really irritating to me because why say that whole thing at the end about how, oh, you would give me the job right now on the spot if you could. I mean, unless there was somebody else that they ended up interviewing afterwards that they liked better. It was a little frustrating at the time because I just felt like, wow, that was a complete waste of my time. So anyway, a couple weeks after I got the email saying that I didn't get the job, she actually texted me personally and said that they had one of those events coming up and she wanted to know if I was interested in coming into the store and doing makeup on some customers for free, not getting paid, just getting paid with free product. I'm sorry, but after the way you treated me, why? in the hell would I wanna come in and do something like that? Like I could see how, yeah, it would be a nice experience for me to just like get more practice and more experience like doing makeup on different people, like on strangers and stuff. And I don't want it to seem like I'm too good for that or anything, cause that's not the case at all. But it was just like, after all that, seriously, you know, like, I just couldn't even believe that she seriously had the nerve to text me. So I kindly declined. But anyway, it all ended up working out for the best. I stayed at that marketing job for a few more months and then I decided to quit and enroll myself in cosmetology school. And I graduated, got my license, and I have been working in a salon, doing hair and makeup ever since. And I love my job so, so much. I'm making more money now doing this than what I was even making at my marketing job certainly far more than what I would have made at the Macy's job. And my hours are so much better, I get to make my own schedule. So yeah, it all worked out for the best. So if you are ever in a similar situation, you deal with something that's really discouraging or there's some sort of obstacle along the road, don't give up and just know that that opportunity wasn't meant for you and something else better will come along. That was definitely the case for me and uh, 
yeah, I honestly feel like that lady did me a favor, truly. If you guys like these story time videos and you'd like me to do more of them, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. I will have a playlist down in the description to my other story time videos in case you miss any of those and would like to catch up. I will also have a link to my cosmetology playlist down in the description. So if you want to know any more information or, you know, watch me along my whole journey of going to cosmetology school and becoming a hairstylist, you can go check out those videos as well. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you aren't already subscribed to my channel, I would love if you would subscribe before you go. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.